right, let's do some standard normal distribution problems using the good old-fashioned Z table here. Now we're going to be using this table instead of the graphics calculator today for this lesson, so you're going to have to have one of these handy. So first of all, we'll be using the Z formula to calculate a Z value, which is Z equals X minus mu over sigma. Now what do these symbols mean? First of all, X is going to be our actual measurement, some number that we're given. Uh, mu is the mean of the distribution, and sigma here will be the standard deviation. And of course, z will be how many standard deviations it is from the mean. Most likely, it's going to be a decimal. So let's look at a sample problem here. Uh, we've got x is normally distributed with a, let's say, a mean of... 140 days, let's say we're talking about student absences here, and a standard deviation of 12 and a half days. Okay, so the problem we're going to do here is find the probability, of course, with my standard deviation given and my mean given, find the probability that a randomly selected student will attend between 140 and 160 days. So this problem has to do with attendance. Now, okay, in, in all this information here, in probability speak, what that means is find the probability that, that X, our measurement, lies between 140 and 160 days. So 100, between 140 and 160 days. And I use inequality signs there. So that's what it looks like without words. Okay, X, what's the probability that it's between the mean and 160 days? Now, we have steps to solve these problems, and here they are. We, don't, we can skip some of these steps, but here's the whole picture. First up, we're going to draw what the x curve is, the actual curve, with the actual mean and the actual measurements. Then we're going to convert that to a z value, or values. There might be more than one. We'll draw the z curve, which will look the same, and we'll solve by probability using the table, but not the graphics calculator today. We'll be using this guy. Okay? Probabilities are in the middle, and the z values are at the top. Back to the problem. Let's draw our X curve first. Uh, most commonly called a bell shaped curve. We put an X there. My mean is 140. And my actual measurement X is 160. I'll just say it's right here. I don't know. And I'm going to shade that in between part. All right. And a reminder that the area under the curve equals the probability. That's why I shade it. So that shaded part is the probability. Okay, it's less than half, so it better be less than 0 0.5. I'm going to convert this 160 to a Z value. Z curve, not drawn great. Z mean, the mean of standard normal distribution is 0, of, cur of course. And let's convert 160 to a Z value. How many standard deviations is that? So Z equals X minus mu divided by sigma. X equal, Z equals... 160, take away the mean, divided by the standard deviation of 12.5. And so my z value is 1.6. So I put 1.6 there, shade the same area. All right, it should look roughly the same. It will be roughly the same. So now I get my z table, and I look up the probability, I look up the probability with a z value of 1.6. Okay, so these are all the probabilities. I look on the side. Where's 1.6? 1.6 is right there. It's 1.60, so it's 0 0.4452. 0 0.44. Is that right? Yes. That's right. 4452. And there we go. Now, a reminder that the probabilities are, of the z values are all given attached to the mean. So this one I just look up on the table. If it's attached to the mean. Next up. Find the probability that x is greater than 155. Greater than, more than, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so let's go through the steps here. Draw the x curve, where the mean is still 140. And 155 is going to be to the right of the mean, 155. And greater than that is shaded to the right. Okay, so let's convert that to a z value. The standard normal mean will always be 0. Let's convert 155 to a z value. 155 minus the mean divided by 12.5 gives me a z value of, let's work it out here. What is that z value? It is 1.2. Okay, so 1.2. Shade the right of 1.2. Now when I look up 
the z value of 1.2, it's going to give me the value that's attached to the mean. It doesn't give me the tail end. Charlie's there. It doesn't give me the tail end. It gives me the 1.2 right here. That's what the table will give me, not the green part. So that is 0 0.3849, but I don't want that part. I want the green part. So remember, everything to the right of the mean is 0 0.5. Everything on that side is 0 0.5. So I'm going to say 0 0.5 minus the orange bit, which is 0 0.3849, will give me the green bit. So the tails, 0 0.1151 is my answer. Okay? Next up, find the probability that x is less than 157. x curve, mean 140. X, 157. Less than, going to be to the left of 157. All right, that's your first bit. We shade those to get an idea. Z equals 157 minus 140 divided by 12.5. We get a Z value of 1.36. That's 1.36. Look up 1.36 on the table, but it's just going to give me the part to the right of the mean. It's going to give me that part there. So I'm going to add that part on 0.5, not subtract it. Okay, because it's more than half. So I look up 1.36 on the table, and what do I get? Let's see, there's 1.3. Can I get a closer look? 1.3, 1.36 is right there. Scroll down, looks like, there it is, 0 0.4131. 0 0.4131 is what I add on to 0 0.5. And it's not drawn to scale. Probability equals 0 0.9131. There we go. Next up, find the probability that a student is between two values, 125 and 136. All right, x curve, 140 is the mean, 125, 136, somewhere around there, both to the left of the mean, remember? Okay, so I'll have two z values here, of course. Uh, let's see, z curve, mean is zero, of course. Convert two z values, so I'll call the first one z1, 125. Uh, let's see, and I'll call the second one Z2. 125 minus 140. I do my thing, and I get a value. I'll get a negative Z value, negative 1.2. And for 136, I will get uh, another negative value, because it's below the mean, negative 0 0.32. All right, so I redraw that with my Z values. There we go. Shade it appropriately. Now, this part... When I look, negative 1.2 is the same as positive 1.2. So I look up 1.2 on there attached to the mean. So the probability is going to equal the probability of what I get for 1.2, that part attached to the mean, subtract the probability of Z2, which is that part right there. Okay, they only give you the probabilities attached to the mean. So this will be the probability of Z1 minus the probability of that Z2 value. And remember, the negatives, are it's symmetrical, so it's going to be the same on the other side. So that's why I can just change that negative 1.2 to positive 1.2. So I look up 1.2, and I think I've already done that one. It sounds familiar. 0 0.3849 minus uh, 0 0.32. Remember, there's no negative Z value, so I just look up 0 0.32, which is uh, 0 0.12. Oh, wait. No, I think I made a mistake there. Hold on a second. Yeah, 0 0.1255. Sorry about that. Subtract the 2, and I get a value of 0 0.2594. This is Ralph and Tom. Next step, find the probability that x is between these two values of 137 and 149. Two z values, but they're both attached to the mean. Those probabilities are attached to the mean. So that means Z1, first one, is going to be a negative Z value, of course. It's going to be negative 0 0.24. And the second Z value of 149 minus 140 divided by 12.5 is going to be positive 0 0.72. Throw those on the Z curve. Whoops. And there we go. Make sure the negative goes to the left of the mean. 0 0.72 is a positive, and the negative is zero, negative 0 0.24, which is the same as positive 0 0.24. So this one, I'm going to add the two, because they're both attached to the mean, and those are the probabilities that are given to me. Look up positive 0 0.24 on there. 
which is 0 0.0948, plus, look up 0 0.72, 0 0.2642. Add the two together, and I get 0 0.359. Done. Thank you.